Well, Northside Life Groups, it is uh, week four, welcome, and we're talking about a deeper yes. And so as usual, we're gonna pick the brains of the guy who just got done sharing all of his good content, but we've got more. So Nate, thanks for doing this. You just killed it again. No, this is fun, man. This 1% thing? Holy cow. That got me. I wasn't even thinking about that in that way. I'd heard that before, but talking about you know, your time away from Jesus, your time walking with him, nice work, man. Well, uh, I learned it. Uh, it was when I was going through some disciple making stuff. Okay. And it was about how crucial it is to pay attention to the small details of Jesus. Yeah. Because when you miss it and you keep walking and you say, uh, I think it was Pete Scazzaro who said it. It's like when somebody says, I've been a Christian for 15 years, he goes, that may not be true. You actually may have only been a Christian one year and repeated it 14 times. Oh, yeah. And it's like, <clears throat> You're like you're you're still veering off here. So and then it yeah. was amazing when I was, when I could do the mileage this week. Oh yeah. To, to think about the further you keep going, the further you you are away. And uh, um, I know you've done this before. I've done this before. You talk with someone who's just come to Christ later in life, and they they grieve over wasted years. What could have yes. happened? What we could have done? And yet you celebrate like crazy because yeah. there's no time like now. Yeah. Right. Yes. Now, so. So you had this really great challenge with the text today. We, we talked about it briefly in the sermon planning. There's this really, really hard truth. I mean, it's re, rebuking and you get behind me, Satan, and it's take up your cross. And how do you walk the, the tension between these are hard truths and here's the gospel? I yeah. mean, you nailed it, but what was going on in your mind as you were trying to work on that? Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. I, uh, my tendency is to be a little bit like the older brother in the prodigal son. Mm. And so when I read that, I'm like, I gotta suck it up. I gotta start denying myself. Yeah. I gotta take up my cross. I gotta get, and, and then I start doing things without Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet he says, if anyone, like, follow me. And so there's a, Jesus is 100%, this is what was going through my mind. I, I gotta keep in the tension. Jesus is 100% grace and he's 100% truth. Yeah. And, and in that moment, uh, I think Peter wanted the grace of Jesus, but he was being rebuked for not taking the truth of Jesus. I've always heard, of, you know, I love grace for me and truth for them. That's that's that works, you know? that's, that's well, you're good that. at truth, too. That's a... <laughs> it's a dangerous quality. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's another angle here that I, I heard, and we, we spoke about this really briefly, but this radical, inclusive invitation. This yeah. idea, it is for all. Everybody. And then there's this crazy narrow uh -huh. way. Yeah. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, the life. How does society deal with that? I mean, I've got my assumptions about this, but it's frustrating mm -hmm. because I don't think they get to hear yeah. the, uh, the, the inclusive invitation because they're so frustrated they about skip the exclusive. That. Yeah. yeah, talk about that. Uh, no, I think, I think this is why you are seeing a society who's not necessarily as keen about Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, but I think this reminds us why the relationships we have with people are so important. Because you look, you think about Levi last week, Jesus going to eat at his house. You think about Zacchaeus, yep. right? Was it Luke uh, 19, I think that is? Uh, totally sideways in his life. And he goes, you come down, I'm coming to your house today. Yeah. And I think the, the, the piece for us is, especially right now, uh, it's going to be through hospitality. Agreed. I think generosity, love, mindfulness, and not to dupe anybody, mm -hmm. but to go <clears throat> because that is what Jesus has done for us. I'm going to lead with that yeah. instead of me just coming and smoking you over the head with something where the truth has to come as well. Yep. But it, uh, all truth with no grace. No good. It no boy, no. So well. yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't work, man. Not terribly relevant in no. this culture today. No. Yeah. And, but, I, but I think, too, that's the, uh, I think this is the beauty and the tension of Jesus is no, nobody else is like this. Mm. That's true. Nobody else is that crazy, loving, good to you and says, and I have this good for you as well. Yeah. But you got to step into it. Like, agreed. <laughs> agreed. <laughs> So you referenced uh, in the study here, page 55, yes. Neil had put together this disciples thing. And uh, yeah. we, we laughed when we first saw that. I was like, Neil, good job. He, he quoted somebody else on yeah. this. But the disciples, check it out on page 55 when you get a chance in your group tonight. 
But uh, when we think about that for us, I mean, we, we can pick on Peter and we can pick on oh, the yeah. sons of Zebedee. You know, we can do that. But we, I've got a dumb moment. My, mine was on sabbatical and about three weeks into a sabbatical and realizing I have somehow tried to out out um, live or out mature the gospel. Like the, I've whittled the gospel out of my life. Mm. And it was just, oh, duh. How can I do that? You, you never outgrow the gospel. Yeah. I'll bet you've got a duh in your disciple moments. I mean, yeah. living this thing for a long time, but what's what's got you right now? Yeah. Uh, probably the most meaningful, uh, and, well, and, and, and it, I would say the most meaningful is a number of years ago, but it, I've, I've felt it, the tendency during this time of a pandemic. Uh, it was in one of my first times of really leading a team okay. in, in, a, in a church setting, and I needed to make a couple hires. And if you're ever in that setting, and not just at a church, but any setting, and you're down some staff or whatever, you feel the weight. You're doing your job and you're yeah. doing the jobs of others. And, and I remember I was trying to interview this guy to hopefully just, in, he was a buddy, just come interview, man. And and he just asked me a question. He goes, man, that's a lot that you're having to do this and this. He just goes, how are you doing? Oh. <laughs> and I, I didn't even think about it. Mm. And I was kind of more of a verbal processor. And I go, I just feel like I'm losing. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't, in the moment, I didn't even know what I said. Uh, and then I had to sit and reflect on it. And it, it I went, what, what I was deeply convicted of is, then where am I working from if I feel like I'm losing? Yeah. Where's the victory of Jesus as the foundation of everything that I do my work from? Where's the yeah. victory as my identity? Where's the victory of Christ as he, he will go before me? Yeah. You know, and... Uh, actually, it was funny. This was a year before we hired Sam Hancock. And I'm going, the Lord's like, hey, I got a pretty good dude. We got this. Yeah. Would you just kind of rest in my victory yeah. instead of you freaking out over there? <laughs> you know, and uh, and I felt that through this pandemic. You know, we start this generosity initiative. <laughs> you know, unbelievable yeah. start. You know, here we are a year later. and st- You know, stuff's still going great, but you just <clears> feel like, you just have to remind yourself, like, duh, he, he is the victory. He is everything, and, and live, live from that, man. Yep. Work from that. There's no shortage of the duh moments. I'm sure you'll have a chance to talk about those in your group here this week. But uh, as we keep going here, just, just one more thing, if we can. So we're going to be talking about this deeper, yes. Yep. And you get to speak to the, to the hearts of the group leaders and the groups. Yeah. If they're going to really take heart this teaching and this week of study, how are they going to look different going forward? Mm -hmm. What's fruit look like? Yeah, I think fruit really comes to this place where you go, no matter where you are in your journey, Jesus is is speaking and teaching you right now because he wants you to see the bigger story that he has going on. And it might not be all resolved in this season, and it might not be all clear, but we see it in the life of Peter. Jesus was teaching him very something specific to get him ready for the road that God had for him. He was the one, this, this failure, the guy who tried to rebuke Jesus, who Jesus would later empower by the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to preach on the day of Pentecost and have 3,000 saved. Mm-hmm. There is a bigger story he is writing. And so when you say yes right now, you, you may not know all the details, but I'm telling you, he's writing a bigger story, and we just get to respond to it. Amen. I, this guy always has gospel clarity. Nate's always been able to teach this really well. I'm always blessed by it. And I was, I was watching and listening today. I'm going, where are you going to turn the corner? And he brought it to John 21. You know, that, that yeah. charcoal fire, that Jesus, do you love me? Do you love do me? Do you love me? me? The reinstatement. And man, that's, that's the truth for all of us. Yep. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Those opportunities to redirect, get that 1% back to spot on and pursue them with all we got. Guys, I think that's a wrap. Nate, thank you as always. You bet, man. Go get them.